Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Ashish. Tell me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, is it necessary to switch on the video or I can switch on the video only at the time of questions? Alok uh, Babu will guide you, sir. Okay. Alok Babu? Yes, sir. Mm. Sir, at the time of presentation, if you mm, on your video, so mm, participant can see you, see you mm, also. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, that's upon you, sir. <laughs> Will be better um, if you are on your video, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, at the time of presentation, I, I, uh, shall I keep the video on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That's not all. So, what shall I do now? Shall I pick the plus sign? Shall I upload the presentation, sir? Upload the, your presentations. Or, huh? or, or you can directly share the presentation, whatever you want. No, I will upload the presentation. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. You can upload it. Eugene, sir, plus sign.
sir are you complete uh, uploading yeah it is converting file it says okay 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 just wait. okay Sir, it is visible. Uh, it is visible to us. Yeah. Sir, another thing. Can you actually on your webcam? Sure, sure. I will. Can you see me now? Okay, just coming. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 sir. It is showing. We can visible you. Okay. Oh. Asit sir. Sir, can we start now? Yes, yes. We can start. Uh, madam, you can start. Good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. Now we have come to uh, the second day. Uh, that is the third session. And uh, this session will be taken by uh, Dr. Ramanathan Natarajan. And he's from Sri Sharda Niketan College for Women, Tamil Nadu, India. He will be uh, talking on the topic that is computer aided design of flotation collectors for ore beneficiation and applications of mathematical uh, crotality and descriptors in new drug discovery. Dr. Uh, Natarajan completed MSc in chemistry in 1979 from St. Uh, Joseph's uh, College, that is uh, Treaty, which is affiliated to Madras University. And his status is careers as a chemistry teacher from grade 11 and 12, and then pursued MPhil in chemistry from Bharya Dasadhan University, Treaty, in 1988. The MPhil thesis results were presented in the American Chemical Society meeting held in Toronto, uh, Canada in 1988. He continued to complete PhD in chemistry from Bharati Dasan University in the year 1995. Part of the PhD research was carried out in Chemical Engineering Department, uh, Lakehead University. Thunder Bay, Canada, visited Lakehead University, Canada four times as visiting faculty, resource associate, and exchange visitor. From 2004 to 2007, worked in uh, uh, in a group uh, with Dr. Shubash Bhasak, and that group is Natural uh, Resources uh, Research Institute, <coughs> and that is Duluth, the Minnesota, USA. <clears throat> From 2010 to 2019, worked as the CEO of a polymer company in Karur, that is Tamil Nadu. During this period, he developed three vector control uh, products that are recommended by World Health Organization to be used in controlling malaria transmission. He published 30... Uh, plus more research papers, written books, uh, chapters, and review articles, visited more than 20 countries, past, participated and presented research papers in several conferences. At present, uh, he is research director at Sri Sharada Niketan College for Women, that is in Karur, Tamil Nadu, India. Now, I will request uh, Sir to please take over the session. Sir, you are not audible, sir. 
सर नॉट ऑडिबल नो सर योर वॉइस इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग नो सर नो इट इज नॉट क्लियर सर इनिशियली वेन यू आर टॉकिंग एट द टाइम इट इज क्लियर See if you may uh, the switch off your video, the signal quality may improve. Okay. Sir, sir, already actually turn off the video. No, sir. No, 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 sir. It is not clearly audible. No, sir. Hello. And now, now it is clear, sir. Okay. Okay. So, my thank you, thank you for the introduction. Uh, the lecture is divided into actually two parts. The first part is computer aided drug design of procreation collectors for beneficiation of wards. The second part is application of mathematical chirality descriptors in new drug discovery. Okay, the summary or overview of the lecture is how the lecture is organized into two parts. In part one, I will be designing, talking on the designing of mineral collectors. The fundamentals of mineral flotation, because several of you may be new to the concept of flotation. The, uh, then it is application of structure activity modeling and the selection of collectors. Then I will be presenting two case studies how we uh, synthesize new collectors for flotation. The part two I will be covering chirality indices for drug design. So most of you may not be a core chemistry graduate, so that I am introducing what is chirality, the importance of chirality in natural systems. And chirality in drug design, and the recent concept of what is mean by chiral switch and repurposing. Finally, I shall be concluding with the chiral indices used for drug designing. So, what is the big concentration of ore? Ores that are obtained from earth crust have only small portion of the valuable mineral, and the remaining part is mostly silica and clay. So we call the silica and clay which are unwanted. As uh, gang minerals, so to concentrate them, we use several pre-concentration techniques. One such is a magnetic separation. However, froth flotation is uh, most extensively used pre-concentration technique. Why pre-concentration is important is, for example, if a ore is only two percent of uh, sphalerite, or if it is a uranium ore, it is only one percent uranium oxide, then we it needs concentration into at least 10 percent to 20 percent of uranium oxide, so that in the subsequent process, uh, downstream we will be using lesser amount of chemicals and the reactor vessels will be reduced. So pre-concentration is very very important in mineral processing, and that is immediately after combination, that is after grinding the ore, then normally pre-concentration is carried out. Froth flotation, as I said, is an important pre-concentration technique. Worldwide, 2 billion tons of ore are processed by froth flotation every year. An important method of ore beneficiation, the froth flotation is based upon surface chemistry of the minerals. So, valuable mineral is for froth flotation. The valuable mineral is selectively rendered hydrophobic so that it attaches itself to the rising air bubble. That means during froth flotation, what we do is we take the slurry of the ore, then we pass air, and air bubble is coming rising up. The ore particle, valuable mineral ore particles will pick it back on the air bubbles and rise to the surface. Therefore, the, air, the valuable mineral has to be rendered specifically hydrophobic so that it rises to the surface 
and then once it rises to the surface it forms what is known as a concentrate we call it a float concentrate and the unwanted minerals stay back in the slurry that we call it as a staling so that as i said in the previous slide it reduces the mass of solids to be handled in the subsequent stages and then what are all the way the flotation systems normally the flotation is a very big uh, process is a unit operation that is normally carried out in the series of uh, flotation systems we call it as a flotation bank but in the laboratory branch level flotation we use a device like this and this is the where we will be taking the work this is the impeller where it will be spinning uh, rotating at about 500000 rpm depending upon the slurry pulp density and the air will be passed through this and the air bubbles will be rising once the slurry is uh, sorry the concentrate is reaching the top and we will be skimming it off so that it is just so this liquid is uh, overflowing and we will be collecting it this is only a laboratory flotation system what are all the main reagents used in froth flotation so as i said the mineral namely valuable mineral has to be rendered selectively hydrophobic and by itself it may not be hydrophobic in cases of coal or graphite they are naturally hydrophobic but other minerals valuable minerals such as fullerite which is a zinc mineral or galena which is a lead mineral or chalcopyrite which is a copper mineral they are not naturally hydrophobic so we have to make them hydrophobic those mineral particles shall be rendered hydrophobic and further we use a specific reagent called collector then the mineralized air bubbles are rising to the surface along with the air bubbles so they pick it back and the air bubble rise to the surface the bubble once it reaches to the surface if it just collapses that is burst then the mineral will again drop back in the slurry so to make the bubble relatively stable on the surface of the slurry a frother frother is something like a soap which will make the froth stable so we call it a frother then to achieve the good separation we have to just play with the ph sometimes that we add lime or hydrochloric acid as a ph modifier and then in some times we need to use a suppressant like sodium silicate which will suppress silica from flotation or in some times we need activate a particular mineral that we call it a reagent as an activate so these are the various chemicals that we use in that but of that we are i am concentrating more only on the collectors because collectors form the most important part of it the efficiency of the collector or the performance of the collector decides the success of the flotation process so conventionally we use fine oil petroleum sulfonates as a collector but they are not very selective on the other hand we use chelating agents as collector what is a chelating agent chelating agent is an organic molecule which can form a five member six member or a seven member ring with the metal atom that is present on the mineral surface so when we grind the mineral the ore is taken out from the earth and it is finely ground to the size of 10 to 100 micron at that time once it, once it is ground fresh mineral surface is liberated on the fresh uh, liberated surface there are a lot of metal sites or metal sites which are exposed these chelating agents can go on and form a chelate that is a bond with them and they form a close ring that we call it a chelate so chelating agents are selectively there very selective reason is chelating agents form complex of chelates with transition metals very easily and most of the minerals that we are recovering are the most of the valuable minerals as i said before lead zinc galena are you take right and all of them are transition metals as transition metals readily form complexes are chelates the chelating agents are very selectively absorbing on only the transition metals whereas the gang minerals such as silica aluminum clay is aluminum mineral they are not non transition elements therefore they don't get floated at all that's why chelating agents are preferably used as a collectors as i said importance of uh, collector performance is the collector is very efficient in uh, selectively and there are if the selectivity is high that only the valuable most of the valuable mineral is coming up that means for example i would say if the initial concentration of the ore is 5% uh, galena galena is let's say and after concentration the flow concentrate is having 80% of all the galena present in the ore in only 20% of the mineral is i say in one ton when i concentrate one 
to turn off the work if only 200 grams is coming across the float and the 200 gram is having 200 kilograms is having 80% of the galena present then the concentrate float concentrates is very easy to be handled therefore this can happen only when the collector is very selective and is able to bring up most of the mineral in the smallest mass amount of the uh, work concentrate so this is that's why I said uh, performance of collectors plays a very, very important role in mineral processing, especially in transportation. So we wanted to uh, synthesize new minerals, the two, sorry, new collectors, to do synthesize new collectors, we didn't want to use a trial and error method because most of the collectors that are being used are only by trial and error method. We scientific method for the synthesis and testing of the collectors. So, we prefer to use a similarity based search. That is, this method is called a molecular similarity based selection. Molecular similarity based selection is extensively used in rat discovery. So, in the basic principle or the underlying principle of this molecular similarity based selection is structurally similar compounds have similar biological activity or toxicological properties or even physical properties. That means if the two compounds are structurally similar, then they may have very closely related or very close resemblance in the physical or chemical or biological property. So this approach we want to extend to the selection of mineral collectors. That means, okay, we say structurally similar compounds are similar properties. How do you identify similarity? Because similarity has to be identified. Similarity is like beauty. Beauty is in the higher eyes of the beholder, therefore. Similarity, how do you identify it? It cannot be a subjective element, it has to be very objective. So, a measure of similarity is needed here. So, to calculate the measure of similarity, we can be thought about it is already being used, that molecular descriptors can be used. Molecular descriptors are the numbers generated from the molecular structure or a given molecule. And these molecular descriptors take only the molecular structure as an input. To give the input of the molecular structure, they are normally converted into a line code. We call it as a line entry system, and using that, they calculate the molecular descriptors. There are available free web to calculate the molecular descriptors, and several research groups have their own molecular descriptor calculators. Then even our group has got a molecular descriptor calculator. Then how to do the molecule? What are the steps involved in the molecular similarity, molecular similarity selection of collectors? First, create a database of n compounds. Why, why do you create a database? Because, for example, if intuitively or you know this compound is, is working, then instead of taking a single compound, we'll around the structure, we can form all possible different structures, and that possibility can even extend to under. Uh, a thousand or two thousand or five thousand that means we say create a but with this database of compounds or structures we do not know whether it is a uh, going to have this property or that property we only know the structure and therefore we call it as a virtual database we create a virtual database of n compounds as i said before we have to convert the structure into a number for that we use molecular descriptors which are all computer molecular descriptors so we calculate m molecular descriptors. That means for n compounds, we calculate m molecular descriptor. That means our data matrix is a very big data matrix. That's an n by m matrix. The n is the number of uh, chemical structures. It may be 5,000 or 10,000. In virtual screening of drugs, it may be even 1 million uh, compound database. And the m can be depending upon the capacity of your calculators. What we do is can generate 130 molecular descriptors. But it is very difficult to handle an n by m data matrix, so we need to do a data reduction. Data reduction in this case, we normally use principal component analysis. I am not going into the details of principal component analysis because the statistical packages such as, such as SPS, SAS, they have the built in uh, principal component analysis system. Once we give the data matrix, it does uh, principal component analysis, and it, the principal component extra analysis extracts principal components. Those principal components may be 5 or 6 or 10, and those components are able to encode the entire the, the data that is encoded in all the different descriptors. Therefore, the data matrix is reduced from n by m 
to n by p, where p is the number of principal components that have been separated. P is far, far less than the number of descriptors we have. Now, using that p descriptor, uh, principal components, we construct a similarity space, particularly n dimensional or p dimensional similarity space, in that we do the clusters. From each cluster, we select one compound, or if you are have facility, you can even select two compounds. And those compounds are synthesized and tested. From that, we select whichever is the best compound, or if we have more than, if we need to refine it further, that can be carried out in the next step. So this is a very hypothetically given uh, similarity space. In, the, in this, we normally, that means each cluster is having the compounds or the structures that are very close, very similar. They are clustered into various, from each cluster we select one compound. So for that is we call it a similarity clustering. And from each cluster, for example, we have 10 clusters, we can select 10 compounds or we can select 20 compounds. And uh, this figure is not flowing up anyway. That's a problem. But in the real situation, the clustering will not be like this. The clusters will be very, very, very close. And therefore, only with the help of a computer, we'll be able to select the compounds. And that is how we have to proceed. Now, I'm going to present the case study. The first set of collectors that we synthesized and tested in our laboratory. For this, I'm going on saying similarity based selection is made and the collectors are going to be used based upon similarity selection. But before using the similarity selection, I have to, for other chemical properties, I know, for example, molecular, sorry, boiling point of chemicals can be predicted using descriptors or uh, molecular similarity, then boiling point, viscosity, the properties can be predicted, but nobody has predicted flotation efficiency in terms of uh, structural uh, descriptors. So we want to first establish that, or we want to test the hypothesis. Structurally similar collector molecules are very close or similar separation efficient. That is, they have a similar collector properties. Only when this paradigm or when this hypothesis is tested, we can use a similarity selection for the selection of a new series of collectors. In order to do this, we build what is known as structure activity or structure flotation relationship. So we used three different sets of data to identify whether that the direct relation between the similar or the molecular descriptors and the flotation efficiency. We took two sets of data from the literature, but one set of data compounds were synthesized, nearly about 30 compounds are synthesized and they we used for rotation of urinary modes and that, that data was used by us. Most of the slides, they have some problem. Okay. The so, flotation efficiency relationship, the, point of, the paradigm is efficiency of the collector is a function of structure. Therefore, here the molecular collector, we call it as the Anyway, I'll, I'll try to give you that again. So, the flotation efficiency, as I said, we, have, we use the three different collectors. One is Ufrana, is not proper, then style as well. There is amount of biophenol, the structures are not going up anyway. Then, spolarite, which blend they are not used, and the that is the numbers using molecular descriptors, as I said. And the results of this uh, modeling is molecular descriptors can be used you can see we can form three linear equations for each uh, collector that is for linear equation for per capita benzers or amino thiophenol using the linear, we can form an equation. So we can form linear relationship, uh, that is a linear relationship between separation efficiency or performance of a collector and molecular structure. That means similar molecules are Structurally similar collectors will have very close or similar separation efficiency or flotation efficiency. Therefore, we decided now, or we have tested the hypothesis that we can proceed with the similarity collection, selection for the collectors. Okay. 
So instead of mineral collectors, we developed a database of uh, high hydroxymic acids. I think molecular structures are not working. And we calculated and uh, then we calculated five principal compound analysis, five principal compounds were extracted, and therefore we formed a high dimensional crystal space or structure space. From that, we selected 20 compounds, and those 20 compounds were tested. Hello, hello, yes, sir. Yeah. sir. Your voice broke during the lecture, sir, for last one minute. During last, I think, 40 yeah. minutes. Okay, one minute. Some of the slides that are not showing up, some of the structures are not coming up in the slides. Hello. Hello, uh, any organizer is there? Yes, yes sir. Hello. Uh, sir, please say. Uh, carry on, sir, carry on. Right. Okay, please carry on. Sir's voice is breaking sometimes. Please carry on, let us see. Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Can I continue? Uh, now it's clear. Now it's clear. Okay. So we select. Shall I go back to the previous slide and repeat it again? Sir, you sir, please, sir. Hello? Sir, please continue. Okay. So from, we select 20 compounds and then synthesize the 20 characters and test them for the flotation of zinc sulfate. Others follow it. Usually in any protection mill, and they use the conventional collectors, they use copper sulfate to activate fullerite. That means at the copper sulfate dosage they use is one kilogram of copper sulfate is used for every ton of Therefore, you can imagine if a metal processing unit is processing about 200 tons of wood every day, Using 200 kilograms of copper sulfate. Expensive chemical part it is a very corrosive chemical. If you want to eliminate the copper sulfate, it is the main purpose of synthesis by test. And we found the new collectors that we synthesized here are able to copper sulfate. Very interesting fact. The iron mineral pyrite along with sphalerite. If iron pyrite is coming in sphalerite, it spoils a great. Every 1% of sphalerite pyrite that is coming to the reduces the price of float concentrate by one dollar per ton. That means it is very, very uh, detrimental effect. So we we don't want the pyrite to come into the float concentrate. Therefore, we want to go back and read the pyrite along with it. So the satisfying fact is the multiple similarity based selection of collectors is very encouraging and we are able to synthesize or develop a new scientific method. We are exhausted a big virtual database of 1,000 compounds, selected 20 compounds from the 1,000. And they are able to find some new collectors. And that is a satisfaction. of new series of collectors. The new series of collectors, we derived the molecular similarity based selection is again used. But what should be the collector? We went back and then searched for various zinc binding sites. And the finger of proteins in the natural system is connected to. Nitrogen amine group on one side and sulfur on the other side. Therefore, we came up with a new metal amine fire. Amine fires again built a virtual database. And this 
these results were very very encouraging the new type of series of collectors namely solarite without adding a copper but in some cases where we need to use copper sulfate we are using only two more grams of copper sulfate in the place of one gram or kilogram of copper sulfate that is we have got a collector which is very selective for solarite and it didn't float any pyrite at all so for a pyrite coming out of the country is very much used almost no pyrite came out and another uh, place is very clean Use is very much reduced. So we have found a new series of collectors which was set up for similar basis collector selection. This new series of collectors by name Amin Abdullahs are all patented, and we have been awarded. We have received the both U.S. and the Canadian patents. So this is successfully where we could use the methodology which was extensive. At the same, we use the same thing here for mineral protection collectors, and we are successful, and we are able to get identify as anti-metal collector, and we could even go to the extent of making it. Hello. Hello. So this research which I explained. Sir, we can't hear you. Sir, your voice yeah? is so fluctuating. Voice is so fluctuating. We cannot actually hear you. Voice so fluctuating, sir. Sir, please you. No, sir. No, it is not clear. It is audible, but not clearly audible. We cannot, it is very difficult to understand what you are saying. So please check the audio. Shall I do that again? No, sir, it is not correctly. And from here, you can start. And now, now it is clear. No, sir. Now, sir, you continue. Can you hear me now? Now it is clear, sir. You can. Okay. okay. I'm repeating the results of amino acid. So, amino acid is like a person. And the rotation of pyramidal is very much reduced. And the carbon sulfate, which we it is normally the way that one kilogram of iron is now reduced to one ton. That means we are saving quite a large amount of money spent on copper sulfate. And more, as I said in the previous slide, copper sulfate is a very corrosive chemical. We are almost reducing the amount of use. Because of these positive factors, we are for a standard. We have
This is it. We have the we it is still two static plans and uh, the work was carried out for a period of six years in the university in the company department. This, now I am moving on to the second part of my carried out in natural resources research in Minnesota uh, campus and this was carried out in the under the leadership of Dr. Subhas Basar. I think you must have heard his lecture yesterday. And some of the data that we used are from USDA lab and uh, which was carried out by Dr. Jeremy A. Kloon. This is more a chemistry so this lecture hello hello yes sir so i'm I'm not able to see any of the chemical structures. This, this lecture is completely chemistry structures. Sir, I think uh, the, as it converted into the um, by by the system, uh, it, the slides actually um, changed into the. So, uh, uh, would you share your screen? Okay. How will I do that? Okay, share and yes, sir, yes. Sir. Share an external video. Uh, uh, voice of this is so much frustrating. Sir, beside, beside the webcam button, there will be a button share screen. Huh? Beside the webcam, there is a button. Button is there, slide share screen. Audio is actually not coming. Sir, your audio, audio is not coming. Sir. No, sir, no, no audio is there. No, sir, it is not clearly audible.
Okay, sir, you can continue. No, no, my question is Again, sir, voice is not clear. Sir, if it is not coming, I think you can continue from this slide, sir. No, can you see the screen? Hey, yes, screen? Yes, yes. And now it's, uh, sound is clear. Uh, I can see your screen also. Can you see the chemical structures? No, 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 no. Only text we are seeing. No this screen. one. When it, when it when it converts it it has all the chemical structures okay I will okay. share the screen once again let me see okay okay can you see the screen now. Hello? Sir, it's audible. Please continue. Let us see. Uh, it is audible, sir. Please continue. It's audible, but the structures, all the chemical structures are not visible. The slide in front of us is asymmetric carbon atom and optical activity. Uh, there on, you can continue. No, no, but the, the chemical structures here, they are the visible. Structure is structures are not visible. But I am sharing the screen. Can you see this? I see my screen or shall I present it from my computer? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can share your screen, sir. Please click on the. I have already shared. I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, see and the I have, uh, uh, select the entire screen and share. And then open the presentation. How do I show all the chemical structures here? Sir, here also not coming, sir. Chemical structure is not visible, sir. Yeah. DG, sir. Mm, yes. DG, sir, uh, sir, can I ask region? Could you tell us? Uh, Shall we better away? Shall we log out and uh, stop? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Do one.
প্রেজেন্টেশন আপলোড করার ফলেই অ্যাকচুয়ালি প্রবলেমটা হচ্ছে কোথায় স্ক্রিন স্ক্রিন শেয়ারিং করেই স্যারকে বোধহয় করতে হবে বেটার বাই শেয়ারিং দা স্ক্রিন পারমিশন টু শেয়ার দ্রিন Okay. First, we have to give the permission to you. Uh, sir, you, you will get a button uh, beside the... Yeah. Okay. okay. So from there, please uh, share the screen. Share entire screen and open the PPT. Yes. I see it now. The title slide is visible. No, sir. Your slide is not. Artel Academy, it is Artel now. Yes. I can share you my presentation by email. Can you upload it there? Okay, I think, sir, you can continue from this. Okay, if there is a problem, then a student can... Send you the mail. Okay. Is it possible from this you can continue? Yes, without uh, showing any of the structures, it is very difficult for me to make students understand it. Sir, behind the webcam, there is a share screen button is there. My screen is shared. Oh, your screen is shared. Actually, then actually it also the same problem will be occur from our end also. If you share your screen. I see it now. Yeah. 
Ah, yes. Can you see the screen? No, no, no. Sir, please open your original presentation. Sir, please open your original presentation, then share that one. Actually, uh, due to the conversion by the system, that actually error happens. Sir, behind the share webcam, there is a button share screen. Is it visible? <laughs> I'm trying to share even only the application window. Hey, then application, hey, then choose your PPT. Choose your PPT and share. So the, please open your original one. Yes, hey, now, 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 now it is coming. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, it is fine. It is fine. Then uh, slide so. Is it okay now? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, so, I, it's fine. I, it is visible. It is fine. So, now it continues. Okay. So I, I'm starting with part two. The part two of my uh, talk is on chirality descriptors, how the chirality descriptors are developed and used for and used for drug design. So this is uh, a lecture which is loaded with more chemistry and fundamentals of chemistry. So first we have to start with what is an asymmetric carbon and optical activity? Asymmetric carbon is one which is attached to four different groups. For example, if this is a carbon which is attached to four different groups, A, B, I am not using C, A, B, D, E, four different groups. So when such a carbon is attached to four different groups, we call it an asymmetric carbon. Because there won't be any point of symmetry. If you rotate it, if there, there won't be any point of symmetry. Therefore, it lacks any symmetry. That is why we call it an asymmetry. And if you see the mirror image of it, then there will be. If these two are like the right hand and the left hand, so the left hand is a mirror image of the right hand, but they are not superimposable over one another. This you would have studied in the basic chemistry courses. Therefore, this we call it as an asymmetric carbon atom. And if one of these, they differ only in the structural disposition, otherwise, with respect to the number of atoms connected and all, the, both isomers, both of them are same, but only difference is the disposition about the central carbon in the space, they are different, that is why they are called, in orientation in space, we call it stereo, so they are called stereo isomers, and these two forms, they differ in rotating the plane of polaris light. If one isomer rotates the plane of polaris light towards the right, the other rotates is to the left, and that's why the property is called optical activity, and this phenomenon is called optical isomerism. And let us illustrate the same thing with an example. The simplest example you can think of is lactic acid. Lactic acid, the three groups, the four groups around it are arranged like this. This is a mirror image. If this rotates, one rotating to the right is called the texto rotatory. The one that is rotating the left is called the minus or the level rotatory. And this is true even in the case of the alanine, which is minus and plus alanine. The word chirality, because we were talking about asymmetric carbon atom and all, but the word chirality was used in chemistry after a large Kelvin as introduced because, as I say, they are related as a left hand and the right hand, and he has introduced the word chirality. Chirality means standardness. You would have listened to several notations that are being used when we are talking about this type of compounds, the chiral compounds or optical electric compounds. They use notations. The person minus notations are always used to differentiate the two isomers. What we take to the right hand side is called the
Hello, sir. Hi. Hello, Dilip. This is Arnab. Um, please wait. Uh, okay. Sir, yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe I will probably use uh, the share screen. Is, will that be okay? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I sent the PDF, which is actually not uh, having these videos. I have few small videos. No, no. Okay. Account notarization is complete. Okay. Narajan sir, please continue. Uh, also, I microwave ground communications for the cities are now. Let's just come on. Narajan sir. Hello, Nautilusan sir. Sir, I'm offline, sir. Uh, there is also offline. Nautilusan sir is offline. Most probably due to this reason, we are not actually say anything. Yes, sir. Most probably there is a disconnection from Notras and Sarent. So, Our will we go five. for the next speaker? No, just wait for a few minutes. Because oh, wait, wait for a few minutes. Yeah. Because we oh, don't know Notras and Sarent again, yeah. they join or not. VPN, sir. So shall we?